man with the uber powerful voice, one that can transform <laughs> into many. He's played characters such as Quadrapat, and uh, he's a Go- Geass user in Code Geass Lelouch of the Resurrection. He's played the pro hero Rocklock in My Hero Academia. He's also done various other animated roles. And he's also the a Grammy nominated vocal producer um, from, in, from um, a uh, album back in 2019. He is the creator, a co creator of an animated project also called Star Child. Today we welcome the great. Gabe Kunda. Kunda, welcome, you. welcome. Thank you for the introduction. I appreciate it. You make me sound better than what I, what I actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man, you've got you've got quite a lot of uh, roles in uh, some popular titles, actually. Oh yeah, yeah you I know. Appreciate it. Like, like I mean, honestly, it's it's an honor to sit down here and talk with you today. You know, as much as I've well, seen. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's it's a cool. When you reached out to me, I was like, yeah, of course, I want. I, I'd like to check out some of you guys' stuff, and I, I'm I'm happy to be on for sure. Yeah, you know, how many people foam at the mouth seeing someone a voice actor from One Piece. Yeah, you know, uh-huh. fish tiger. <laughs> like what? <laughs> One Piece, man. That that show, the, the show that never ends. I love it. Exactly. Oh my it's goodness. Cool. It keeps us working. <laughs> oh man. So like, I have like. So many questions for you today, and I'm sure a lot of others do as well. You know, one of the yeah. goals that we have when we, um, you know, we do these streams is we always like to highlight the cre- the um, the creatives in the industry in order to inspire others that are interested in doing or pursuing, um, you know, that field of work, or even just want to know more about it. You know, and yeah. a lot of the accomplishments that you've done, especially you know the past few years, um, you know, it's definitely. I mean, when I saw you know the fact that you even did uh, what was it a um, commercial for creed 2 and i remember like i love creed 2 the movie yeah you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. that was that was crazy um i was back in i think like 2018 it came out fall 2018 and um i mean uh you know movie trailers is another area of work that i do quite a bit and getting to work on that title i mean it's like anything with michael b jordan and it's, it's like what like you don't even it blows your mind but that was that was an awesome campaign to work on for sure well, did you actually have the chance to meet him or no i didn't i didn't I, um so in those in those kind of situations with the movie trailer stuff for the most part like you're doing you're, you're working on the marketing side of things so your voice is basically the brand of the title the movie so um, you know, Warner Brothers, they send you the copy and you read for them and you send it back to them and, you know, they cut the spots and they air them. So that's the only thing. So I think the crazy thing for me is the fact that, like, all these spots like are seen by millions of people and, and are even watched by the celebrities themselves, you know, and they never really, you know, you don't really think like, oh, that's actually a human being that's reading the, the trailer or the narration for it. So uh, it's been cool just doing that. I haven't gotten a chance to meet any. I think maybe... Oh man, no! I don't think I've ever got a chance to meet any of the people I've worked on as far as the titles. I've worked on several different ones, but I haven't gotten a chance to work on or to meet any of the actors yet. But I'm sure they'll come. Oh yeah, I'm sure. You know, especially I mean, one of these days, honestly, it's probably going to be the case where it's the other way around. Someone's voicing a trailer for your work. Oh um, man, that'd be yeah. insane! <laughs> that'd be insane. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, like. So with everything that's going on right now, I don't want to make this about COVID-19 because I'm tired yeah, yeah, yeah. of talking about it. But I have to ask the question, sure. how does that affect you right now in this climate as a voice actor or even just in terms of your career in general, not just voice acting? Yeah, man. So in, in, you know, in the aspect of voiceover, it has like I think the first week when everything kind of got shut down, it was like. Oh, shoot. Like, because our work is dependent on production, you know, it's dependent on shooting shows. And and like, if those shows aren't shot or those series or those animated series or whatever or whatever, we won't be able. There's no work for us to do. Um, Animation wise, it's a little different because you can draw and do whatever you can at home and you can we can record from home like we're doing today. But I do also a lot of promo stuff for TV shows uh, like the coming up next. It's this show, you know, or whatever. And, you know, those shows have halted. And so like Adult Swim, much... too. Yeah, like Adult Swim, like a, a lot of those type of things, like the production of it has stopped. So we're kind of like in this this purgatory limbo thing uh, where we don't really know what to do. But other than that, like for the most part, I've done everything from home, like 99. I'd say about 
85% of my work is done from home. The rest of it, I'm going to studios, whatever, working on different projects and, and animated or video games or whatever. Um, but for the most part, like, it was a week where it was kind of like nothing. It was like, everybody was kind of like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what I'm like, what are, what is our studio going to do? Like, what's the new norm? Um, and then everything kind of started kind of becoming a little bit more like, well, this is what we're going to be doing for the rest of we don't the foreseeable, foreseeable future. So I've been working from home. And, and for me, it's been an easy adjustment just because it's something I've been doing 85% of the time anyway. So, um, you know, I know it was a little bit harder on some people who have been just relying on going into studios to work. Uh, but it, you know, it's, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment for all. So do you feel like, since you're saying that's like an adjustment, like is your home equipped to be able to do that or did you have to get it equipped? No. So my, my home has been equipped to do that since, oh man, I've, I've always had a home studio. Um, uh, but especially specifically this home, like I just, this is relatively a new home. I moved in back in June of 2019 and I like, it, you can kind of see the panels, the acoustic panels. Yeah, everything is like uh, like I have acoustic panels above me and on the sides of me. Like the windows are blacked out. Like, the, oh, can we the, see? Yeah, sure. Like, that's where the the windows would be. Yeah, oh. and like even even like this. See, the, even like this vent right here that you see. You see that? Like mm. even that is like we have some acoustic foam in there. We also have acoustic foam right here at the door, so that like. Because my 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 house is kind of echoey. You open up and you say something that kind of travels through the house or whatever. And so what we're having was like when I was recording and I do like a loud scream or something, then it would ring through that metal and out to the hallway. And so you hear that in the microphone. So we had to put like acoustic foam in there. And it's just kind of like, and then, you know, the rest of my situation there and acoustic ceilings up there or whatever. Um, but so that's kind of like how I have my setup. But a lot of people don't have that kind of setup, honestly, believe it or not, like people, a lot of voice actors were, are relying on going into the studio to record. But now it's like, if you don't have a home studio, you're not going to be working. <laughs> Somebody's going to ask you like a yeah. you know, crack of dawn, like, hey, can you throw out this clip for me real fast? Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it, I mean, it's it's that. It's, it's it's now become to that point where like home studios are imperative. Um and, you know, a lot of these studios, like the Disney, the Nickelodeons or whatever, they, prior to COVID, they've been like, yo, like, we're not working with anybody who does not live in L.A. because we want you in the studio. Like, we want you in. We want to record you. And they won't work with you. Now, it's like, we have no choice. Like, we, we have to work from home. So, you got to have a nice home studio set up. Acoustics has to sound great. Like, you can't sound like you're in a hallway. Like, it's got to mm -hmm. be top notch. And um, it's going to be interesting how it changes the game a little bit for the industry because, you know, for the longest time they wanted us in studios, but now they're going to find out that maybe working from home isn't a bad thing. Like, it's actually easier. They might know? save some money. Yeah, save some money. They might yeah, they <laughs> may actually gut out some of their studios. They've been costing them thousands of dollars. So, you know, yeah, you know, it's changing the game. And it's also may give opportunity for people who are trying to get into VO and trying to get into the animation space who are like, oh, I don't live in L.A. But now it's like, well... You know, you don't need to anymore because you just have to have a nice studio. Like, I hope I'm not overstepping my bounds when I ask this, but like, how much did that actually cost to like get that studio like set up approximately? Uh, you know, when I had, I wish I had a picture of my old studio prior to this. It was in a closet. It was, it was in a master closet, and the master closet was even a master, like it was that big. But um, and that one literally probably like at the max three hundred dollars to set all together. Like with acoustic foam, this right here probably took me around fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, it's not yeah. as much as I thought I would, it would actually end up being. No, honestly, no. Um, now the house is expensive, but the, <laughs> the the actual room itself to get the acoustic panels up and everything cut, it's like about fifteen hundred dollars max to get everything up and running. Now the equipment. Um, that's other things that I've gained over the years and whatever. And so the, you know, they're a little bit on the pricier side, uh, is stereos and stuff, Yamaha stereos and keyboards and you know, interfaces, but all together, as far as setting up the acoustic treatment, about $1,500 or something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's not something I've mentioned. I'm, I know I've never actually done any, like, of course, any kind of voice work. This is the limit of what I've done. I love so, it. I mean, the Yeti? Oh yeah. The Yeti. That, that, that's it. That's yeah. all I have. So like hearing about this, you know, is definitely informative to me, you know, especially uh, yeah. since I know a lot of people who are interested in, uh, 
you know, uh, doing uh, voiceover work. And I was, uh, and I will say, like, you don't. This is, you know, I've been doing this full time for three years now. We're coming on three years. But even prior to me doing it part time, like, I, I really wish I had a picture of my my dorm studio that I had. It was literally the only thing that was covering it was clothes. Even at the one that I had, like, before I moved to this house. It was in a closet with clothes around me and me just mounting a TV on the closet wall and doing that. And, you know, it's trying to make do with that. And and you don't have to have it this fancy. I just after my after growing my career and doing what I've been doing, getting a little bit of some money to make it work, investing back into my, my, my you know, the work that I do. I've been able to kind of, you know, make it make it feel a little bit more roomy and just kind of, you know, do what I can with it. Um, so don't think that this is the standard because it's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> this this, it's this not. is as slow as it. This is when you starting from the bottom. This is where it's yeah, at. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not at all, man. It's, it's always, you know, if if you're, if you're looking into getting a VO, I mean, if you have a closet, some clothes around you, a nice microphone, and you can act, you should be in a good place. Okay, okay. Now, I want to really talk a little bit about some of like the roles that you've done, of course. Yeah, um, and then later on, of course, I want to touch on, um, you know, your project Star Child, of course. Yeah. Um, but before we do that, and do you have any clips or anything like that of like uh, any of the voice work that he's done, just so that you know, of course, for some of the viewers that may not be familiar with them, you know, they can see some of the, the amazing work that uh, Gabe has done, you know, over the past few years. I do. It's uh, I couldn't get it uploading here, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen in a bit. Well, actually, can they hear it through there? Or if not, we can. Probably not. I can link it. You okay. You know what? That. We'll just post it after after the stream for any of you guys who want to check it out. Um, you know, so I apologize for the technical difficulty on that. No, behalf. it's all good. But, but um, you know, just to go over again of some of the roles that you've done, like you did, for example, um, Quantrapat and Ko Gias. He was like a kind of like a major minor character in terms of like yeah. being a antagonist. He had a Gias, you know, definitely yeah. enjoyed that character, you know, for the his stay in the series, um, you know, especially oh, kicking yeah. it off, you know, with uh, his assault on C2. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The crazy thing about that role is that I didn't know. I, I knew Ko Gias. Actually, I've watched a couple episodes. Wasn't a huge fan of this. Like I wasn't like enthralled into it. But I didn't yeah. know how big of a role he was going to be or, like, was it a smaller role? Like, I got the call to uh, – did I even audition? I don't think I auditioned. I don't think I auditioned. I just came in. Like, they called me and they said, hey, oh. they would like to offer you this role for, <laughs> wow. for the movie. Um, and, and, and they said the movie. And in my mind, I was I thought it was going to be straight to streaming or something like that. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know there was a resurrection, like, dub coming out for it. <laughs> um, so I go in there to record. And I'm like, okay, this is quite a bit of lines. And I'm doing my thing and I, whatever. And, and I'm like, so what is this What is this for? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be coming in theaters. Like, I was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's coming to, like, the, like, the actual movie, like, theater. Like, I can go sit in my, my family and watch this go. I was like, yeah, 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 no. And I was like, wait, what? How the heck did I get in this? Like, why me? Like, you know, it was just so, like, mind blown, you know, about the fact that it's theater. So, like, Mind you, by this point, I had already recorded my lines. So in my mind, I'm like, I don't even, like, I don't feel like I did movie theater acting on that. Like, you know, I try to bring my best to everything, like, every role. But when you think about it back, you're like, I could have done so much more. Like, I could have, like, really, you know, I don't know. Um, so anyway, it, that was a really, that was, like, my first, like, my first, like, kind of debut as far as, like, being on a movie, like, be my voice here on the movie screen. Um, so that, it was dope, like going to go to the, even the premiere and like sitting there and seeing people's reaction to the, to, to, to the entire thing. I was sitting next to this one dude and, um, you know, I was, I was kind of talking and, well, he was, he was talking about, he was like, dude, that was so crazy and everything. And I started talking, I was like, yeah, man, it, it was, it was, it was pretty dope. And I started, we're just talking <laughs> and he's like, and he's standing, he's like, he's like, dude, you kind of sound like that guy. I'm like, I, I looked at my wife and I was like, Tell him, like, yeah, she's like, go ahead, and tell him. Like, yeah, I actually am. And he's like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. And so, like, right, going back and forth. And, and so, oh, uh oh, can you oh. hear me? Yeah, yeah cut out just for a second. Oh, yeah, we just left to come out laughing. And he, you know, he was like, dude, that was crazy. How did you? And so, you know, stood there for a couple minutes and just kind of talked about 
how it, you know I came, came to record for it and everything like that. But anyway, that was one of my favorite stuff to work on as far as anime. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, I know this dude over here. I enjoy you watching. May, I was gonna say, Kogias <laughs> oh, really? is his favorite series. So, oh, it's, really? It's really my oh, favorite really? series. I enjoyed wow. the best out of it. Wow. Yeah. That. That. You know. It's just like that, that scene, I don't want to spoil anything, but the ending scene when you when when mm-hmm. Kujapot, for the most part, when he kind of his, you know, the ending it was funny to me because it was like, <laughs> you know, it was funny too. It was, it was hilarious. I mean, it was hilarious recording it because I was like, I've never been that before, you know. So anyway, um, that was fun. He was like, well played. <laughs> yeah, right. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Oh man, fun. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I you know I can definitely say I uh, thoroughly enjoyed the movie, you know, as a whole, especially, um, yeah. you know, as a. Sorry, right, I went yeah. on a tangent. I, I just got excited about it all again. Oh no! <laughs> I, I, like, like this is this is your time, you know. Like we, <laughs> this is definitely your time, I, you know. I, honestly, I'd be concerned if you know we didn't, um, you know, if you were just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'd be like, am I asking the right th- questions? Am I? Are we having a good, you know, good talk? You know. <laughs> no, good. But um, exactly. No, but um. You know, I'm kind of curious, like, so, of course, that was the first, like, I guess you could say, feature film that you had out there, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. So, what would you say has actually been the most challenging role for you, or most mm-hmm. interesting role, in terms of how, like, the um, level of skill that it required you to have in terms of your voice? That's a good question. Um, uh... I, you know what? I think it was when I did Kimono Michi, um, and I I played I played the wolf in that one. Wolf game. And what's interesting about yeah, but yeah, yeah, exactly. And what's interesting, what was challenging about it, it was the fact that first of all, I, I had to put on kind of this yeah, this this, this kind of rough voice, you know, and kind of, and and I don't do that a lot. And then on top of that, there was a scene where like. I'm getting tickled as a dog. Like I'm getting yeah, like, I know exactly what you know exactly you're talking what about. So, so it, it, as we're recording this, I'm like, this dude who has this kind of like he's got an underwear. He's in, he's a wrestler, right? He's just like yeah. you know, topless <laughs> dude, big heavy set guy, tickling me, and I'm like having to pretend like I'm like like a dog, like whimpering, you know. And I was like, this dog is whimpering and enjoying getting everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> against his will. <laughs> against his will and so oh. the, the director was telling me it's like you just have to like it's, it's a it's a kind of a, it's a comedy type deal just like you have fun with it and it was so hard because i'm such a like i like the more serious roles more like the intense stuff but to break out of that and to kind of like completely go like this is more comical more like you know whatever that was hard you know as somebody who does like the more serious stuff that was hard and i'm actually interested to see her how I was picked for that role, like how, cause I didn't audition for that either. Like I just got called in for that one. Um, and you know, I was just kind of like, I was like, man, I, I gotta like whimper and <laughs> like all that stuff. <laughs> like, oh, gosh. And so people always come, um, when I go to, when I went to the convention, like people will come and say, oh my God, I loved you is, you know, Wolfgang and, um, and come on to meet you. I'm like, oh, you, you saw that one. Oh, you know? <laughs> I'm sure they ask you right on the spot, like, can you do the voice? Yeah, and I'm like, uh, not that one. Can I do something else? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, evidently, it did pretty good. A lot of people love that scene. Oh, uh, man. I, they did. I was, But the entire time, I was kind of like, I hope people don't, like, you know, drag me for this. You know, it was just kind of, I don't know. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know if I, I was just thinking about it too hard. You know, I, was yeah. like, I, I couldn't let loose and just have fun with it. It was, it was challenging, but. We got over it. It got recorded. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I um, I can only imagine like you know if somebody like there are roles that people come up and ask you about that you're like, yeah. oh, you know, I don't know if I'm that role is uh, yeah, a role no. To... <laughs> if, if if that's a role that I can I can either pull off or if I could just you know some I, I get a lot of tweets sometimes people mention me and stuff in like uh, about like shows that like are about to come out or whatever like get Gabe Kunda on this and I've 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 seen the Japanese version of I'm like. I wouldn't do this character justice or like i think to myself like trust me you don't want me in that like in that role um but i mean some people they hear different things and and, and then i get good responses from it's like no it was funny like it, it worked and so you know it, it's just interesting about that show though 
um, and this doesn't really, this doesn't happen often, but we had recorded the first episode of the show and of Kimono Michi and mm. we, what happened? So we only recorded half of it, I believe. And then there was a gap. I think it was like, I think it was a holiday or something like that. And the director of the show was no, like he, he, he went for a convention or whatever and someone else took over. And so there would have been maybe like two weeks since I had recorded it. And so I get back in the studio to record the the remaining half of it but i totally forget what show it like i don't i don't quite remember what show it is because at that point i had already like i was already kind of knee deep into my hero stuff and i was working on cop craft as well and so there was so much stuff that was going on i totally forgot what show was and so they were like yeah so you're playing this wolf guy whatever different scene don't even recognize and so i start recording and i'm not doing the same voice as i did at the beginning of the beginning half so we record it in this different kind of voice and so when the director comes back, maybe like a few days later, and it's it's almost time to air, he's kind of like, "Wait, that's not the voice that I that I told Gabe to to read in." And so I get a call. I was like, "Hey, you have to get back to the studio and record th- the show because you recorded in a different voice." And I'm like, "Wait, what? What?" And so then there's like, "Yeah, with the director with so and so." I'm like, "Oh, that was a show." Yeah. <laughs> and so I get back. We have to do the entire half of the episode over again. It was. It was horrible. It was it was it was terrible. I was like, I'm so sorry. I just I blanked. I didn't. I forgot what role. I was just going on what I instinct. But instinct, you know, pure instinct. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's like, oh no! And then like two days before it airs, it's like, oh. you got to activate your your voice ultra instinct. Yeah, <laughs> voice definitely. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that, that, that's exactly what you need to do <laughs> immediately. Your vocal cords just start moving. You play the music. Oh, <laughs> and I was. I was never right. <laughs> I, was oh, I was like, I hope like this wasn't like a, I don't know. Like sometimes you could do some voices where you're just like, I don't remember how I got to that place. I don't remember how I got there totally. So anyway, it worked out okay. Oh man. You know, I, I love hearing stories about the, like the back doing you know, behind the scenes stories of when you're having some of these, know, these right? roles. Yeah, no, yeah. seriously. Um Really quick, I know we've had a few comments come in. Um, I just want to address, you know, at least because a couple of people commented. Shout outs to Sekai. I see you there. Martez, shout out to you. Shout out mm-hmm. to Darren the Awesome. Shout out to uh, Burning, you know, uh, Exter. And then, what's up, Jarvis? How you doing? What's up, Elite Ace? Just had to sh- shout everybody out since people are commenting. Um, and anybody new who's joining the stream, you know, if you haven't subscribed to Shining Otaku and you want to continue on with these interviews and everything, just give us a, a sub on YouTube. Now, I want to return back to the interview at hand, of course. Um, now, what I really want to know, you know, in this case is with you, of course, also being a voice actor, you have to, um, um, you are, of course, put your own creative spin on things. What do you feel that you are adding to the industry and changing in the industry? How do you feel as though you as a as a actor as a whole, not just voice acting, are progressing the medium? And if you don't feel like you've done that yet, how do you f- plan to do that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've done it in a little bit in the sense of like, you know, I'm, 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 also in, I'm in the industry of, of voiceover, but I'm also like, in this industry, I'm also doing quite a bit of different things other than anime. And uh, sometimes, I I think in any facet, like people can kind of like pigeonhole you into one thing, Um, especially being a person of color. Like sometimes there are roles that people are like, oh yeah, you're gonna do that, That's, that's your lane and they keep you in that. But I've had a really fortunate you know, so far career of being able to kind of give different shades of, of, of myself and my personality and all that kind of stuff. And so it, I think it reflects to my work. You know, I don't just do voiceover. I also do vocal production. I'm a vocal arranger. And um, Grammy nominated. The, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's, 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 it's <laughs> I have to honor. say that you got to push that more. You got to push that more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Grammy nominated. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. It's, it's a big deal. I was, I had a four, you know, so, uh, you know, the awesome pleasure of working with some talented musicians and, and, and artists and stuff in that world. And then you move into the world of, of now creating a show and, and creating, you know, Star Child and, and on that production level. I don't even, I mean, I've wanted to create something before, but it it's going so fast. It's like, wow, I'm, I'm already here. I'm already doing it. And so 
being in, in those different facets, also being a singer and, and, and singing an acapella group, I have an acapella group that I sing in all the time. And, and, and oh, yeah, just kind of yeah, nationally been, known too, right? <laughs> Somewhere, yeah, I've seen uh, I've, you guys have had cl- clips all over, uh, you know, the news and everything of singing and everything, yeah, man, it's, mm-hmm. it's been insane, it's been insane. And so, trying to diversify myself, but even like you know, voiceover, like you know, I do animations, video games, some TV narration, movie trailers and stuff, and just kind of spraying myself around. Um, and I think for me, it's imp- I, I, what I get from people is that, you know, I didn't know that I could do so many things. I didn't know that I can kind of branch out and not just be that one thing. Um, and even in, even in the world of anime, like, I've gotten to play some characters that I'm just like, you know, I don't know if I would have got this character just a couple years ago or like a few years ago, even 10 years ago or whatever the deal is. Like, I don't, I don't know. I think the climate is changing and I feel like um, me amongst other actors, pe- people of color are kind of starting to make, Hey, this is the norm. And this is what people are looking for. Like they're looking for representation. And, and, and I think I'm helping push that um, specifically like, <clears throat> like when we did for my hero with rock lock specifically, like, that was one of the ones where I thought in my mind, I'm like, you know, this show, um, it seems like there's not, it's great because it's all kinds of facets, all kinds of people with different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, this is the first person of color that we are seeing on the screen. Oh, yeah. And so I wanted to, I thought to myself, I was like, man, I want this guy to feel real. I want him to feel like, you know, that's my older brother or that's somebody I know down the street. That's somebody I play basketball with. That's somebody like, you know, that I I'm, I am familiar with, and so when I went to go record that, you know, we kind of had that in mind. And so when I when I started just reading, it felt natural, it felt good, and it felt settled in the character. And I think that's um, it was it was a really big response from everybody on on how they felt about the voice and everything like that. But I think that's what I, I feel like I'm I'm bringing as far as I like to think that I'm bringing as far as like into other roles that I take or whatever responsibility, kind of the realism of it, the grounding, or the relatability of it. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. Long story long. <laughs> well, actually, oh no, like, so do you feel as though some of your colleagues, you know, yeah. for example, within Funimation, like, do you feel yeah. any of them are not really doing that as much as you would have liked? Or do you feel as though um, they don't really have to because some of them, maybe they've already made it to where they've wanted to make it, or maybe they've kind of become, <clears throat> I don't want to say, uh, like they've reached their peak, but they feel as though they've become comfortable in, in what they do that they no longer want to challenge themselves. Do you think that you might know, be? You know, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I know for me though, that I didn't see that type of representation when I was, before I came in. So I didn't see a bunch of it. And and, and, and so when I, when I came in and, and other actors too, like for instance, Zeno, uh, Robinson, if you guys know him, he plays Hawks in My Hero. And, and you know, you have people like Phil Lamar, and you have, like, all these other actors who do so. Now, they have do you met Phil Lamar? animations. I have. I have. I actually have a video oh, of meeting Phil Lamar. He's, he's great. He's fantastic. We're actually represented by the same management, which is really cool. Oh, um, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's insane. Um, but, like, I didn't, I didn't see a ton of it. And I think... Honestly, you know what I, I tell I feel like that changed the climate and people people always like, no, no, no. But I feel like as much as people thought Black Panther was like a corny thing, I feel like it set a blaze for like, wow, wow, this is actually what people are looking for in as far as representation in a sense of like like in, in the media, in the entertainment industry. And I feel like from then on, I know I've, I was seeing a lot of auditions coming in for people of color or like pe- people that were just different from what we were seeing before. And for me, I was like, okay, okay, the wave is changing. Um, but for me, I've always been a person who was like, you know what, I, I think more than just kind of like being a person of color, like being able to bring this character to life. Because if no one resonates with this character, if no one can like say, hey, that dude is real or that character is real, it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> like you right. know, it, so I think... I think that's been my whole, whole like mo with this with this with this journey is just making sure that I'm bring, I'm doing giving some fidelity to it. But yeah, like I, you know, back to your question, like I I don't know. I, I I've seen some representation, trust me, but it hasn't been as much as I would like. You know, um, I'm with you. So on that. I, I I'm hope with... that I, I'm I, I hope that I am like helping to contribute to that. And um, 
you know, also directors, it's in their hands as well. Like, you know, so they, they make them, they make the casting choices on who's on what. So, you know, sometimes you can be the best, the best of the best. You may not be looked at, like you may not be casted for it and we don't know why, but you know, there's a trend that goes with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I really want to get to, I guess your, your, your personal project, um, or, um, I would say Star Child. You know, I would say, of course, with you wanting to add more into the industry, of course, as far as, you know, like being more of a, uh, like for it to expand more and give more opportunities to, you know, people of color or, you know, even ourselves. How do you, like, can you just talk a little bit about what Star Child's about? And then, of course, you know, um, what you hope to accomplish with with the story? Yeah, man. So Star Child, oh, man. I'm gonna try to try to give without not giving because you know everything is still kind of in development for the most part. But uh, it is it's a story of a kid who is on a search for his mother, um, and you know he's departing from his home of Solar City, 22 years old. Aaron Akari is his name. I think some of you may have seen like some pictures around, um, and he has a super neck neck named Hyperion. Um, and so he's on this quest to find this relationship that he's been he hasn't had with his mother we don't know if his mother's dead we don't know if his mother's alive somewhere and so we get to see the growth we get to see some friendships that he has he has a best friend in kit and he's along with this on, on this journey with him and another friend samantha starway who she's along with this journey with him and, and and this is kind of without giving too much like we we see him battling people that are after his mech hyperion that are after something special about his mech. You already talking right up, on as, as this, right in my yeah, alley right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Series. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and you know and, and and you know what's funny about it is we want people to think it's a mech series. And because we, we we've kind of gotten that category of like this is gonna be about mechs and stuff and 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 for now I'll say yes, it is about mechs, but it's not just about that. It's so much deeper and I cannot wait to show like the world of Star Child, and when you guys see just how how filled it is, and just like we're just using mechs to tell a bigger story, and 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 I, I'm excited to share with you guys once we get things more things up for them. But we've got some things in the work as far as development and who's going to be streaming what, whatever the deal is. We'll we'll, we'll give all that information um, soon. So but, what can yeah. we actually expect to see an update on that? Because I know I've seen the trailer for it. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I'm sure plenty of other people are. And if not, I'm going to make sure we share that, of course, on our page sure. so that everyone can check that out. Um, you know, because definitely it looks like a, you know, really exciting project. Uh, you know, yeah. at least I'm, like I'm pumped for it. Um, yeah. You know, but... So, so far we, we, we're doing, we're uh, weekly, well, at least this week, we started to kind of give him some descriptions on each character. Like Aaron, we spoke about how old he was. Um, and, and about how he is one of the smartest minds in the um, the mech soldier mech program, um, and you know not everybody gets into this program. And Aaron is able to get in because he scored ninety percent in the percentile, ninety percentile to be able to get into this school and learn what he learns. He's also the second youngest to have a mech, and so we we, we kind of went into this this kind of description of of. Aaron and, and we'll do weekly descriptions of these characters. Um, but as far as like the date on what we'll be releasing on where it's going to be coming from, we, we kind of keep that under wraps because things are still brewing. Some more interests are coming in. And so we want to kind of keep that like open. We don't want to come out and say, yeah, this is where it's going to be. And then, you know, something else bigger comes down the road. And we're like, whoa, why did we say that? You know, so it's, it's a lot of things that are in the in the mix. Um, that are coming, but we are releasing weekly information about these characters. You go to our Twitter page, you'll see me, uh, Brandon, and I are uh, the co-creators of the show, and and we'll we, we're having updates there every week, every Friday for the most part. Well, I'm sure the music's going to be fire too. <laughs> oh, the music! Oh, I can't, I cannot wait. So if you're if you're a fan of Samurai Champloo, Cowboy Bebop, feel lo-fi hip hop like jazz. Um, I mean, like just that I, that mixture that lounge on the couch you know yeah you definitely talking yeah. to the right the right crowd here on that one <laughs> that is that is what this show like music is actually a character in the show like like that's how big it is and how important it is it's aaron's escape like he's always wearing headphones and just kind of like in his zone when he's with his mech when you know he's in his mech and sometimes he'll take off his headphones and hit the radio in his mech star child radio and you hear this music and how it engulfs draws you into this world 
of Star Jobs. And so I, you know, it's it's super exciting for me and Brandon. We're we're pumped. So what influenced you to move forward with this project? Yeah, um <laughs> it's funny. So I've I've kind of for me I was always like, you know, I want to create a show one day, you know, I don't know what it's gonna be about, but I would like to be on that that progress. And then Brandon, though, he had this script written out years ago. Um, and just kind of this plot written out years ago. And so it wasn't until we saw an episode. Well, for me, I saw an episode when Cannon Busters came out. Oh, um, yeah. Back in August. I yeah, almost started so, to ask you about that. I was like, maybe you may not. I don't know if you knew you would know about it or not. But, no, you know, Cannon Busters LaShawn Thomas. The, yeah, LaShawn. Yeah, no, Cannon Busters lit the, the flame um, that was already kind of like it, it was. I mean, I watched it and I was like. Okay, like a wave of inspiration was just kind of like, yo, it's it's possible. We can do this. And so I called Brandon on a whim. I didn't know, like I, I saw Brandon's work. Um, he's a musician and that's what I know him for first. Um, this is music on Spotify and everything like that. He's a fantastic musician. And um, I saw that first, but he would also post some artwork of his ideas and stuff. And I was like, man, I feel like this could be a story here. And so I called him just like, yo, bro, like, I'm interested in actually moving forward with like an actual project, uh, an animated series. And he was like, dude, like I'm literally like, I I'm down, whatever you want. I'm down. Like I have some stories and then we can talk about. It. And so we get done talking and um, he goes to the, the, the uh, like he goes to, to, to a bookstore, a comic bookstore or something uh, uh, around that. And he's reading like Castlevania, like books, you know, now, I am like immediately starting to search for animators for this thing. And so in my mind, I'm like, you know, I don't know. And so I come across Powerhouse Animation, who are the creators of Castlevania, Seis Manos, all on Netflix currently. And I was like, you know, I'm going to reach out to them. I know they're a big studio. I'm not sure if they're going to, if they even see anything with this, but we'll see. And so I reach out to them and they're like, we'll do it. We'll hop on. We want to be a part of this. And first of all, I'm nice. like, whoa. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And they say, yeah, we'll work on the teaser. And I call I call Brandon, and mind you, I'm calling him, and he is literally having the Castlevania books in his hand, reading through the pages. It's his favorite <laughs> series. It's his favorite series. <laughs> literally in the moment. Him, <laughs> I call him. I'm like, yo, so these guys, are you familiar with Castlevania? He's like, dude, I'm literally reading a comic, like the books right now. Like, what do you mean? Yes, this is one of my favorite series. I was like, dude, they just said, that, like, the creator's studio designer like they said they want to work on this and he's like what and so like our minds are blown because i did not know that he's a castlevania fan i didn't know that you know i didn't know he knew anything about that and and and, and it was just kind of like fate <laughs> so it that's what kind of blew it off and it's just been spinning so fast and we've been moving things have been moving creating and, and just characters have been creating and created and, and and the teaser video as you saw uh, uh is out and we're excited about it and we've gotten quite a bit of interest in it. So it's, it's, it's going to be great. We're excited. Yeah. I just went in and linked that teaser in the uh, comment section. Anybody want to check it out? Nice. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, like I always say, you know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for this, you know, I'm, like I saw that, you know, cause I actually seen it. Well, actually I think I might've seen it uh, around the time when you first posted it. And of course oh, I nice. recently looked at it again. Um, you know, so Ooh, yeah, you. I'm always for, I, I always want to see, new projects, new type of stories come out. You know, we don't, yeah. I feel like you don't really see enough of that. You know, you see the same old standard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I think that's, I think that's why with this story as well, like we also wanted to show growth in this story. Like we get to see these, we'll see these characters age. We'll see these characters hairstyle change because they're, they're, they're coming. Into this, <laughs> yeah. Change some clothes. Like you'll see them. And I appreciate that. Every new season. You know, it, it'll be something like, different. Dang, Goku, you've be been wearing the same outfit through. forever. And, and like, bro, there's no way you're 34 <laughs> forever, bro. Like, come on. Or, or how no. you? So it's like, I, I, and, and that's something that I personally, and Brandon and I, like, we loved about, like, for me, Digimon did that. Like, and I uh, th thoroughly appreciated that. Like, you saw their growth and their, and that's what I wanted in shows always. It's like, okay. Favorite season. This is great. We get this is great like we get like the villain of the week this is great but i i got we can kind of get tired of the villain of the week thing like we want a story we want something that captivates us so we are trying to do that for you guys 
yeah, you know, I'm, shoot, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see it. I can't, I know I can't wait. Um, you know, I, I wish you could tell us more. To be honest with you, you know, at least tell us. I know, well, I know. <laughs> At least, at least like a like a, a projection or something, but you know I understand. Ah, you know? It's 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 so it's so there's so many moving blocks right now, and I just I we can't we can't do anything about, like we've been we've been told not to, to like keep things under wrap because things are being moved, around, especially now with COVID. Um, oh yeah, things, well, that... a lot of things are just kind of scheduling and things have just been all over the place. Out of so. whack. Yeah, out of whack, and so you may say, yeah, this summer, and then you know. And then all of a sudden the change. Yeah. Right. So we try to no. we try to make sure that we get a date, we stick to it. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, you don't want to keep pushing it back, you know, like a bunch like, of uh like our, our, our buddies that start with the S and with the S. Phoenix. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> You know, have a have a, a, a Kingdom Hearts uh, situation. Oh man, <laughs> be waiting don't for years. Me. Don't remind yeah. me. Oh, oh my goodness, I love that. I love that series. Yeah, you know. I know. Now, before we get to some of the questions, because I noticed there were a few questions, um, or at least a couple of them, um, I wanted to ask you one big thing: Who are your influences? And I'm, I'm like, as far as like as a as a actor and as a um, as a writer, you know, who are your influences in, mm. in acting and writing? Like, if you had um, to pick, like maybe, like I don't know, a couple individuals, or even if it's just one. Man, writing wise, obviously, Lashawn was a was a huge was was somebody like not even like just all around genius, um, and 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 I think I've been following his stuff for quite a bit. Uh, of time and just kind of looking into how he kind of developed his stuff and um, you know he when I meet him one day I'll say yo bro like what you did really did pave the way for some, some people like me like who are just like wow this can happen um, so uh, but on, the, on the acting side I'd say like Phil Lamar like I said is like one of my heroes um, uh, Kevin Michael Richardson um, who I mean <sighs> Gosh, look at like, this dude is, is incredible. Um, Keith David, um, uh, Don LaFontaine, who you know is the voice of God. Like you see, you hear him on every movie trailer. He's now passed away, unfortunately. Um, rest in peace to him. But he was someone else that influenced me. Um, man, uh, wow, I feel like I'm miss, I'm, I'm I'm leaving people out. Uh, that's messed but, up, oh, man. That's Cree, messed Cree, up. Cree, Cree, Forgetting Cree, about Cree, people. No, I'm kidding. Cree, Cree, Cree Summers. <laughs> Cree Summers. Although she's although she's a you know a, a woman, she her, she's a woman of color, and her body of work is insane, insane. She's on everything. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, like uh, Chris Sabat, uh, people like him. Um, those are the people that kind of inspired me on the acting side of things, and and just kind of like have helped to grow me. I mean, I had a conversation with uh, Chris Sabat. Um, and you guys, I'm, you guys, you guys know who Chris is, right? Yeah, Piccolo, voice of Vegeta, like Piccolo. You know, <laughs> yeah, <the rest. laughs> he, he took <laughs> many yeah, different he, voices. He, he, he took me. We, we we went out to dinner one night at a con, and first of all, I'm like, I can't believe I'm going to see. That's like, got to be surreal. <laughs> yeah, like he he's like and he, like he was like, yeah, let's have dinner. Like he sat me down, and I told him about like kind of my plans and everything. He's like, dude, you have something special, and I and he was he's like, I want to help in any way I can, any way I can. I, I, I'm here, like, here's my number, everything, and, we, like, anytime I need anything, he's, like, on it. And it's crazy. It's it, it's cool. It, it's inspirational because that's somebody I looked up to since I was in, like, I feel like I'm in diapers. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we right. all watch Dragon Ball, and it's just, it, it was insane to, you know, and all this other stuff that he's done as well. Um, so, um, he, him and, and other people who have, like, kind of sowed seeds along the way of, like, dude, just keep at it. Keep at it. You're going to be good. Another guy who I look up to, his name is Rod Houston. You guys don't know the name, but you guys know his voice. He's like the voice of CNN, the voice of like he, he he's the voice of Zequel, the voice of Verizon, like so many other like brands that you hear every day. You don't know it's him. Um, and the brother is black. Like, like for him to, to do as much as he did, it's like, bro, I can do this too. And so inspired me just just a few man like i could keep going on and on <laughs> but that's that's just the people that i'm thinking about right now that's top of my head 
So are there any like techniques from those people that you pulled away that you feel like you've implemented in your own work, like certain techniques that they might use with their voice or? Um, I feel like uh, I one person um, who also inspired me, I can't believe I forgot this, um, James Ronald Taylor. He is um, Obi-Wan Kenobi in the um, Star Wars Re- Rebels. Netflix. Rebels, yes. Um, but he he like he has a YouTube page, which you guys can go check out if you're interested in voiceover. He has a YouTube page that's like dedicated to voiceover, and you see his process on how he works. And one of the things that um, that I got from him was like the kind of conversational tone when it comes to like commercial reading or when it comes to like being like kind of chill and just relax because a lot of times I can get into voiceover and you think you have to have this you know just kind of like boisterous voice or whatever and you have to sound like an announcer and I think one thing I talked from him is like dude just chill have a normal voice talk to me like you're talking to like a friend and like I started booking a lot of work taking that approach of like the just chill conversational guy next door type of reads to my copy i started booking a lot of work with that doing that and so oh, i'm always thankful for that like that just conversational chill tone is what's starting to book because they want real and relatable well you want real and relatable if i come up to you like call now you're not going to call now <laughs> <laughs> so um that's kind of like what i what i picked from, from like there. the mesothemial like, was it the mesothemial mesothelioma uh, mm-hmm. mesothelioma i can barely say it guys yeah right. no. uh, <laughs> you have mesothelioma yeah it's no, like you, you don't really relate with people like that. But um, another one, other thing is like versatility, like being able to use my entire range, you know, not just being somewhat deep or somewhat like whatever, like being able to like if they're asking for a little kid voice, you just kind of like raise your pitch here and then you kind of get up here and then maybe he's kind of dorky and so kind of that's some rasp there and he's kind of like it's kind of glassish but then if he's kind of like a mean guy you know he's kind of like dude get out of my way you know like that kind of feel and then you know if he's kind of big and he's got a big chest and long teeth and you know he's you know you just mold and you use your entire range and and, and bring a character to life that all matters and so i try to use my my voice like a piano you know there's different ranges to the piano and i I like to play in different sectors of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I know, uh, as far as, uh, you know, voice acting is concerned, I mean, I feel like it's one of those things to where, I, of course, I've never done it. I mean, the extent of what I've, I've ever acted was maybe being like, I don't know, maybe like in a school play when I was like, maybe like in fourth grade or something like that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that's probably the, the biz, biggest extent. But when you think about it, you know, as far as doing acting, I feel like, remembering the lines at least to me would be like the the hardest part and having to emulate that like or when you guys are doing when you're actually like doing your script like for example when you actually have to record it are you allowed to like re- reference your script at all or are they just like I mean, not when you're at home of course i'm talking about more when you're in the studio or are they like you need to just fly right into it no man like i mean the great thing about voiceover is like first of all no one can see you second thing is like you have your script at all times like they want you to read off of the script and, and and they want you to be able to bring that script to life. And so there's never, there's never been a, probably if you're doing motion capture, which is a lot of the things now where you're having to put on a bodysuit, it'd be good for you to kind of learn the lines because they're not just capturing your voice. They're not capturing your movements as well. And so that's a little hard to have a piece of paper hold, holding onto. But as far as like all our shows, like for instance, Funimation, um, like even in, in anime world, we are reading from two screens. We're reading from one screen with the script, and then we're watching the lip flaps of we're watching the actual show on the right side. And so what we're doing is all you hear in the earphones is three beeps, and then you're in, and you're in on the fourth imaginary beep. So what I hear is beep, 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 and then I have to say my line and try to match the lip flaps of this character and also try to emote emotion within that lip flap it's not easy um and that's and that's on dubbing so like pre-lay animation is great because it's a little bit more freer so i can take my time with words and if i want to say like um you know i went to school with mom i went to school with mom versus or or if i wanted to slow it down i could say i went to school with mom you know i could do that and take my time Mm -hmm. with dubbing you got to ignore commas. You got to ignore all that kind of stuff that you would naturally take because you're matching to lip flaps, lip flaps that have been, you know, 
created Japanese, you know, mind you, you know. So it's it's a whole other ball game. And uh, but the great thing is you have a script in front of you, <laughs> you know, and you have a director and you have the screen to show you what you're doing. Um, versus pre-lay, it's just you know you're taking your time, you're reading, and they draw to your voice. So I know recently you also like um, put out a video on YouTube about asking people whether or not if you were gonna you know what kind of content they oh, want to wow. see. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you planning on like going forward, like maybe giving some tutorial videos for those that out there who are more interested and want to get? They're like, man, I want you to give me every little detail of how this process works. I want you to essentially <laughs> train me and take me under your wing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely wanted to do that because I, 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 man, every day without fail, someone is asking me, like, how do I do this? How do I do this? So that's exactly why I made that video because I was like, you know, I'm going to I want to make this this YouTube page active. And since we're in the Rona season, um, I might as well use this time to, 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 to do that. Well, yeah, it's yeah. probably going to be the century because. We don't know, um, but yeah. So that I, that's why I, I'm, I'm definitely going to dedicate that channel to like, like, you know, also music stuff, but also voiceover, like how to, like, what are you doing when you're reading a script? Like, what's what's that like? Auditioning, like, what is that like? How to get like maybe how to get an agent or representation or like, what is it like? You know, when you are trying to, um, uh, reactions in in like in anime, like. Is our reactions as dramatic as you think they are, or are they, are they just kind of like normal? Like, because back in the day, like, you know, if, if you have a reaction, a gasp or something, it's super dramatic. Like, if you go watch like some older animals, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so people make the mistake. So, people that make the mistake when they come into a session nowadays, they go and they, they have that in their head. It's like, <laughs> and it, it, it's not, not like that. The directors are going to tell you, hey, bring it down a, a whole notch. Because if you do it that way, it sounds gimmicky and it sounds kind of like, this is a comedy, you know, um, and like a parody almost. Uh, and so it's a lot of things that people don't know about and they kind of get mis misled a little bit or, or maybe they, they learn a certain thing a different way. And I, I'd love to help out in any way I can on my YouTube channel. And that's what the plan is. And this is Gabe Kunda, right, for your YouTube channel? Or is it? Do you yeah, have it should name? be. Yeah, just Gabe Kunda. Okay. Gabe Kunda. Yeah, definitely. Make sure you guys subscribe to that channel because definitely that will give you all the knowledge you you want in terms of voice actor. I'm assuming it will, you know, because obviously you're gonna you have yeah, you only okay. think you have that video up, but you know, we know you'll put you'll you'll be putting more content out. So absolutely, you know, you'll be in good. Um, now, one last thing I want to uh, to touch on, and I ask everyone this: What is your end game? Mm. What is my end game? Wow. Um, that's a good question. You know, I, I, you think about it very vaguely, but you don't really think about the end of it. Um, I know, right. obviously I, 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 I see myself doing more, working on more shows, overseeing more shows. Um, I feel like Star Child is going to, it's going to be something that's going to open the floodgates to a whole nother thing of more like things where they're just like, well, actually we want more. Like what other stories do you have? And I feel myself kind of overseeing, uh, right now we're in developing also like a, a studio production, like a housing place where we're, we're getting writers and we're getting musicians and people who have ideas and get, making this a studio where like we can start pitching ideas to these connections that we're having through Star Child and whatever. And so I see myself being that in, 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 in that world, in the world of voiceover, man, like you know, I know there are guys who have like who work on like, like, oh, like thirty movies a year, man, and that's what, like they are the voice of these campaigns and like and, and, and like movie trailers, voice of movie trailers is one of my favorite things to do, bro. Like, at, in a world out of where... all the I, out of all <laughs> the stuff that I I do, I, yeah, no, I, I don't know. It's just something cool, so cool because it feels like you're in the movie, like if, like you to be responsible in voice wise on the marketing side of things to be the voice of a movie is insane and, and i've always looked at looked at that since i was a sophomore in high school and i just want to grow in that i want to be like i would do want to become like a don la fontaine one day but people are just like yeah gabe coon did the movie trailer. like and you don't need to say the movie trailer guy you're just like gabe coon like oh yeah the movie trailer guy. um i see myself in that way and also eventually teaching like um like holding like Maybe voiceover schools, like creating a school or something like that, where I can kind of help other 
because it's hard. Like you go on this Google, you type in voice acting and everything under the sun for voice acting comes up, but you don't know what's real and you don't know what's fake. And so I want to be able to be a hub where I create a hub where people, I, you know, after years of experience, I can teach like, this is what I did. This is what you may not want to do. Or maybe you do want to do that because no one's doing that. Or, you know, you know, just kind of finding new ways to, 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 to show other people like, yo, you can do this. And, um, yeah, I, and as far as the music thing as well, like I, I, I would love to arrange for more artists and more, uh, more like my dream is to, to work on a, a, um, a, like a Beyonce project. Like I would love to vocal Beyonce arrange for a Beyonce project. project. And, 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 you know, it, it seems far fetched and I like things that seem far fetched because it keeps, it kind of keeps me on the journey and I get to grow and, and get to that place. But it's, Things are in the works, and I know, I know things. Oh, no, I never will say that something's far fetched. You know, I mean, go, <laughs> go, go as for the stars. Like they, they always say, sky's a limit. I say it's higher than that. You know, so I Dude, mean, absolutely. Of, absolutely. I mean, you've made it. You think about it, you made it this far. You know, you can keep going. You know, right. so right, yeah. So that's, you know. that is definitely my my journey. Like music, I want to excel in the acapella realm as well, and then voiceover. Obviously, like I would love to do more. I would love to do more uh, anim- uh, anime movies as well, and um, some feature films, and, 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 and in that world, um, I've, I've got actually some some cool projects I'm working on now, is in regards to like some video game stuff that I'm like I would never thought I was going to be doing, and I when you know when the announcement comes out, it's going to blow some people's minds, but it's it's pretty marvelous, is what I'll say. You know, I, I have to ask this just because it's, I'm a personal fan of this, and I'm me and a couple other friends. We probably talk about this series all day and night, and it's coming back. If you were asked to do a voice on Bleach, have you ever watched Bleach before? Yeah. Okay. Woo. If you had to, in, in, like, if you had to pick a voice from, do you know anything about the final arc of Bleach? I just had to ask. This is so random, but I just had to ask. Do you know anything the about final the final arc? No. <clears throat> Not the final arc. Okay. Well, if you did have to choose a character, let's say that they're like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're starting fresh with a whole new cast. Right. Who would you pick out of the cast of characters of Bleach? Oh my god. All right. So ah! had, it's had the Jeopardy thing in your head. <laughs> do, do, Truly, do, like do, I'm trying do, to think. <laughs> What I do is a real uh, I can't I feel like I feel like whatever I feel like whatever I pick is gonna be kind of like sacrilegious in a in a in a sense. I don't I, I just sacrilege. Well well it's like they did so well. It's just kinda of like what else am I gonna add on to the show? Um <laughs> somebody asked me this yesterday too and i was like it believe it or not whether i forgot what it was for i think it was uh uh brotherhood uh, 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 uh and i was like i can't i can't make that uh, y'all i die mean, you know, that's fair <laughs> respect in and of itself so i can't blame you you know what the mm-hmm. narrator the narrator are you gonna play the safe <laughs> <laughs> You know, play the safe bet. You don't want to give us the character. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, no. It would be. It would be the narrator. I think. I think that's the safe. I mean, if. I mean, I love if you go. I mean, Johnny Young Bosch is like one of my favorite voice actors. Man, he's he's incredible. But I wouldn't say his like I wouldn't I wouldn't say like him you know I would I would take his 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 place so I would I would narrator narrator oh, <laughs> oh my narrator goodness. so they're gonna like watch the video and be like oh shots fired like oh you trying to take my job now <laughs> no no <laughs> not at all that's that's why that's why I was like that was like see this could go really south really fast like, your next encounter with them is gonna be a little bit different like okay I see how it is <laughs> and I just it's funny I just saw. Uh, I just I realized I was like actually Johnny and I have been in two movies together like uh, uh, the um, uh, Code Geass and the um, My Hero Academia movie um, that just came out so that was that was cool so anyway oh nice nice okay. nice 
Renji, well, maybe? I don't know. Renji? Okay, okay, yeah. finally. We got one. Okay, Renji, Renji. I mean, <laughs> there we go. You know. that, that, that's it. That's that's all I'll give because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh. Well, we are getting ready to wrap up here in a second, but I do want to address a couple of the questions that came in. We had at least a looks like two. One of them looks like that was for oh, us. Can I and see the other one. Oh, um, yeah. the ones on like some of them are on Facebook and some of them oh, are it. on our YouTube channel. So they're coming in from two different places. Oh, got it. Oh, yeah. Um got it. But actually, can you pop them up, Nico? I think there's a way to I, I'm popping them up currently right now. Yeah. So the first one I believe is towards us. It might be towards us. I'm yeah, that one. Is... Um, how do I submit an interview? Okay, Jarvis. So if you do want to see a guest come on the show, just send us a, a you know a message or whatnot on who you would like to see, and that goes for anybody who's watching the videos, any guests that you'd like to see or you want, you know, would like to have come on the show, just shoot us a message, let us know. And of course, you know, we'll try our best to get the guest on the show. Um, that's the best way to do it. You know, the more of you guys that want to, that of course, you know, voice that, then, you know, the more, you know, guests that we'll be able to have on, on board. Um, you know, and again, I appreciate Gabe coming on. Uh, next question. Now this is towards you. How much direction do they give you on your roles, if any? And this is from Royal City. Oh, ton. Ton, 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 ton of direction. Um, uh, I, I will say, when you first go in for a role, like let's say you get called, you'll get Funimation will email you, hey, this is your time to come in. Um, you normally don't know what you're working on. Like there are times where I go in and I don't know what show I'm working on until I get there. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like if, if they say I'm working with a certain director, I'll know, but you don't know. So sometimes you'll walk in and then the director's like, okay, so he's his character, um, mid-range guy, yada, 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 X, Y, Z. Um, let's just see what you do with it. And then you'll go, it's your job as the voice actor to come up with a voice or come up with a character and bring this guy to life. Once we get that settled and you're able to do that, then it's then that's when the director's like, okay, great, love the voice, let's start developing who you know what's his direction in this th scene what's happening in this scene this is what you're doing you're punching this person and whatever you know what i'm saying like you get more in depth and it's it's quite consistent like it's it's not like you're just going in there kind of making your own thing i think the only liberties you have for the most part is maybe coming maybe coming up with the voice um of trying to figure out like what are you going to do with this character but as far as like when you, yeah, direction. Oh, so they don't let you like switch up the script if you're like, you know, I don't like the way they said that. Let me no. Change. Well, you know what's funny? I will say, um, with the Rock Lock, I there were quite a bit of, and you may be able to point them out, but there were certain scripts that I there's certain words that I like, I switched around or like I I made it feel a little bit more grounded, um, and. And it's funny because those are the, the lines that people are just kind of like, like there's a scene where Rock Lock is at the, the, the conference table. Like, the conference table, I knew it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the one of the the things, I forgot what happens prior, but he says, oh, hell no. That wasn't in the script. That wasn't in the script. <laughs> and I put that in there because that's how I actually felt mm. in the system reading it and watching it. I was like, oh, hell no. Like, what what like what, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and so that energy, I kept that energy throughout the entire thing. And so I was able to get a little bit of some liberties there, but for the most, it, it's not common. Like it's normally a director saying, "Let's move this word around" or "Let's switch this around." But I can't really just come up and say, "Yo, I hate this entire line. Can we switch it?" Throw I'm the whole not, script out. I'm I'm writing a throw, new one. <laughs> throw the whole studio out. I'm I'm, I'm building another one. Yeah, now we can we can't do that. Oh man, you know, I, I always kind of wondered about that a little bit. So, does that just go for like most of the projects, or is that like all the ones that you've actually um, you've worked on? As far as like you can't really change the script that much, or is that just like with Funimation? That goes. That goes for most of the project. Like there are some times where you may do something like an improv thing that may work, but for the most part, you they'll ask you to keep the integrity of the script because it may start to also feel like maybe you know better than the writers do you know and or and it may feel a sometimes little sometimes it weird. might be true no well, you know and sometimes it might be sometimes it might be you know like you may have something better in the can but it's all the perception of it um and so yeah yeah pretty much everything above board like if i if there's room for me to improv i will if but for the most part i try to keep it close to the script and um 
you know, have fun. Okay. It looks like we had another question come in. Let me see here at the bottom. It's uh, from Marcel Gray. I noticed you have a band on your finger. Are you married? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Happily married. I was married. Uh, I got ma- I guess I'm a newlywed, I guess. Um, oh, got congrats. Married last congratulations. Year in June, June 7th. So we're coming up on a, on a one year. Uh, oh, congrats. Uh, congrats. Karina. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, All right. It was crazy. It was a, it was a, we went to Paris for our honeymoon. Now, what's also crazy about it is like, how do we, we almost pushed another year. And how we would have done that, I would not be a married man. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, I'm thinking about all what's going on right now. Yeah, like, yeah, right. You, gotta, you know, you you, you definitely um, you know um. Thank you. Is it Marcel? Mar- Marcel? Yes, Marcel. At least I'm assuming. Yeah. Great name. Thank you. Okay. Well, looks like we're getting ready to wrap it up. I don't. I'm. Looks like. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, there's no more questions. So, um. Oh, Thank you, everybody, for joining. Now, before we go, one last thing. Is there anything that you want anyone to know, you know, or, you know, it's to say to any of the viewers out there before we close out? Ooh. Uh, anything that's that's coming up that I can talk about? Uh, oof. Nope, can't talk about that. Um, <laughs> just like you a know? checklist. Like, can't yeah, talk, I'm just can't. like going through. I was almost like, yeah, no. Um. I mean, just keep uh, follow me on social media. Getting like, swole? I'm, 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 huh? So you getting swole? You know your shirt. Your, your, I'm trying your, your, your to, hoodie. man. <laughs> it's hard with the quarantine. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to. It's it's hard. It's hard with the quarantine. Like Lifetime Fitness is closed and whatever. And so I'm, I'm stuck in my house with a Peloton bike. So I'm losing weight actually. <laughs> um, but no, like I, I, I mean, other like just. Follow me on Twitter. Like we're, we're we're posting updates about Star Child like almost like every every week. We're posting little tidbits of it and stuff. And um, also my YouTube channel, I'm gonna be posting like uh, voiceover stuff there. But as far as like projects, I can't really like I'm working on yeah. Well, there's a lot of things going on uh, on animation side and some video game stuff that I'm working on. Uh, oh well, I could talk about the movie I'm working on. Uh, Black Widow comes out in the fall. Uh, I'm the Ooh, voice for man. that trailer. And uh, so you, every time you hear that trailer on TV. At the end, it's my voice you hear there. Now, how did you almost forget about that? One? Like, you know, like you know, an MCU movie like, oh, I forgot I'm just doing one of the biggest blockbuster movies of all time, you know? Like, I appreciate it. No, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I was thinking, I guess I was thinking anime, anime stuff. Like, I wasn't really thinking about other, other work endeavors. Yeah, that one I'm working on. And then um, another movie that's coming out on Netflix called Extraction with uh, Chris Hemsworth. Um, he's... Um, oh, Gabe! Shoot! Uh, for some reason, we cut out there. I'm not sure what just happened. Um, All right, everyone. Well, you know, this well, has been fun. Well, in any we case, technically, we technically are at the end of the stream here. Oh, wait, here we hold go. on. He looks like he's coming back. <laughs> okay, we got. Him. Oh no, he's coming back. Okay, we got. Then I'm back. All right, he's back in. Oh, I don't sucks. know what happened. I don't know, I don't know where it ended. Um. As soon as you started talking about Chris Hemsworth, I don't know Chris Hemsworth like somehow like channeled the power of Thor or something and just uh, said, you know what, that's, that's you're about to say happened. something you don't want to say. No, that's okay. definitely what happened. No, uh, yeah, I'm working <laughs> on that movie. Uh, I, I do the, the I'm the voice on that trailer campaign for Extraction currently, and you can also hear me on TBS on the show uh, Miracle Workers. I do the promo like I'm the voice of that show, and then on oh, TBS. Yeah, on TBS. It's 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 a it's a funny funny show. Um, huh. Also. The new show called, um, not a new show, but the season two of The Alienist on TNT. I post promos for that. Um, you can hear me on, I'm on, I'm on CNN as well. Um, man. Uh, you want to hyping up the debates? I'm a, that's right. <laughs> no, I, I work on this show called The United States of America with W. Kamau Bell. And it, it actually, I think it airs like this week or next week. And so I do a lot of promos for that. And uh, also the Today Show on NBC. And so I'm all over the place. Oh, see, see, a lot right. of things that you, there's there was there was quite a bit you could say. Yeah, <laughs> right. I just I see sometimes you forget. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you coming on today. You know, I know yeah. we enjoy having Likewise. you on. You know, um, you know, very quick. Uh, just a few quick announcements, guys. Um, next video, or I should say, next interview will be with uh, uh, Rohigashi. She's a manga creator. 
She also did reviews on YouTube as Shot Anime. For those of you guys who remember or are familiar with her, remember a lot of her reviews that she did. So definitely join us in two weeks. Uh, what's today's date? I'm always bad with the date. Uh, Saturday, 18th. Yeah, so it'll be two weeks from then. So I believe that's May, maybe like the second or third or something. But um, should be around in there. Um, 10 yeah. p.m., same time, Eastern time. Also, soon enough, we'll be putting out copies of Callisto. So you can be on the lookout for that. Um, the one shot, you know, a lot of you guys know we've been working on. Um, and you can check out Shining Otaku for a lot of our manga projects, of course. You know, for any of the chapters of Gods of Life or uh, for Exidio, any of our previous works uh, that are out. Uh, so just make sure you go there. And for any other interviews, that, for the interviews that you're interested in. Um, make sure, most of all, that you subscribe to Gabe's channel. You know, go to his channel. Um, subscribe if you're interested in the voice work. Um, and of course, all the announcements that he just previously mentioned, you know, be on the lookout for that, you know, especially if you have Netflix. Um, and um, yeah, I think we've said everything that we need to say for today. Um, oh, social media accounts. Marcel said that. <laughs> also, um, make sure that uh, you go to the Shining Otaku on YouTube and subscribe and check out uh the or like the Facebook page if you're on Facebook. I'm trying to make sure I'm not forgetting everything. We also have a Twitter as well, uh, so check out Twitter. Check out Gabe's Twitter. I'm assuming you're more. Are you more active on Twitter or are you more active on um, your Facebook fan page? I am more active on Twitter and Instagram. Um, that's but, but mostly Twitter. Like I'm on there quite a bit, but like Instagram, I update also like my stories and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. I also vlog so, on there too. Vlog. Okay. So you have vlogs on there as well. So I think we covered the full basis, guys. So just make sure you check out a lot of those. The handle for the Shining Otaku page is just Shining Otaku for someone that asked. And for the Facebook page, it's Shining Otaku Comics. But anyway, guys, I think I've said enough here. I think uh, we'll go ahead and post everything for everybody to check out as well. Um, be sure you rate this video and share it around social media as well. And uh, thank you all for watching. See you guys later. Catch you all later. Peace.